Uh, thank you for coming or watching this video. My name is Mark Lurie. They call me Marcelo around here in Spanish. And I've been here for 22 years and on this property for 19. And on this old slab, this is in Mexico, by the way. We're in, uh, that's Ensenada in the, in the north there. We're um, about two hours uh, over the border. San Diego is north. And um, I'm on this north side of the mountains because we're growing trees. We're planting a forest in the canyon here. And we're, we have an eco community that we founded. And you can see we're building and we have solar. We, we're building with um, stone and ferro cement and sustainable materials. And that's kind of our bigger picture. And so we're also going to be building this ferro cement water tank. And that's the project we have going right now, which I'm wanting to share with you all. We're using an old slab that we had. We had a fire here in 2007 and a big plastic tank melted, but we had this huge slab. So concrete is so great and sustainable and why not use it because it's here. So now we're going to build a ferro cement water tank and we want to make it look like a boulder and have a creative way we go up the back and, and uh, and I think we're going to try and even build a bench into it so we can come up and sit in this view and, and uh, check out the level of the water. So um, I hope you enjoyed this short video. Here we are, we're starting a new project using the old slab. Now this is a slab built with rebar, um, 24 inches on center, half inch rebar. And it has a ring foundation under it, a shovel footing, maybe a foot by a foot. and quite strong and I would suggest with these kind of size tanks at least a five inch slab four to five six inches is even good to make sure you have enough strength and that it's gonna last forever so we start with the slab and if I had built the slab I would have put rebar coming up at certain increments along the way to then tie on the rest of the ferro cement but since we have the slab we're drilling down in and then we're going to anchor rebar studs about three feet long into the slab to start our construction. First thing we're going to do is do some drilling of holes. And we've actually done them already, but we're going to show you how they're done. And we're going down in about two and a half, three inches, something like that. And then we'll put special caulking to hold in our posts. So Martin, me quieres ayudar? Can you help me? and show folks how to drill these holes. Y pueden ver que estamos haciendo como tres, cuatro pulgadas. Ok, Martín, ya. Y ya está. So you can see we're, we're doing these holes about two and a half, three inches deep. Let's do another one, Martín, see. Sí. Por favor, sí. Okay. After we drill the holes, then we have to get the cement really clean. So we've been using a little blower and also there's other ways to do it. We've been cleaning with a rag and then blowing them out. <laughs> Next step we're going to do is we, I cut the tip off of our ultra extreme grab kind of uh, caulking. And what you really want to do is find even the epoxies, the better ones, they're very expensive, like $30 a tube, but they have more grab power and we're going to put this, fill the hole and then put our, our rebar down in the hole. Here we go, doing another hole. We're putting in these 3 8 inch rebar posts. We pre-cut them to about three feet because we want to have at least 50 overlapping diameters and it's three eighths, so uh, there we go. Okay. I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing here so you'll be able to understand the steps as they come up. So you, if you go online, you look on YouTube, so you'll see that there's lots of different ways to build these ferro cement tanks. Ferro cement is the construction of rebar, wire, cement, concrete, 
made into shapes and they make boats out of ferro cement i'm doing ferro cement roofs on my houses here in in uh, the eco village and it's used around the world it can be considered sustainable because of um, certain factors one is for instance even though there is production in making and processing cement look at how it is this is this was slab was put down in 2003 and it's still strong and and i think cement concrete reaches its maximum strength at 11 years instead of uh you know deteriorating and then slowly deteriorates but the point is that later this gets broken up and it's used all over for other other things it's used for road fill it's used for rocks it's used for it has a different life after it's a slab it goes on living kind of like rocks and, and uh, you know that kind of a, a natural thing so that's why i like using it and it also this tank i'm trying to build to last forever i mean i don't you know somebody said how long is the tank gonna last well i'm trying to build it to last forever and that means if it's maintained and waterproofed and maybe gets replastered on the outside at some point it becomes a water tank that is a special thing it feeds our whole property we're at the top of a big property here and we're going to gravity feed off this tank we've done it before uh, several little houses, uh, orchards, uh, campground down there with other tanks in different places. That being around nine feet in diameter, maybe inside it'll be more like eight feet. And then we're going to go about eight or ten feet tall. And we'll just kind of see how the construction goes with the body that we have. So in our case, we're starting with these vertical posts to connect to the old slab. And now we're gonna let this sit for a day and let the let the cement, even though this is quick grab, it's probably already grabbing pretty well. We're gonna let it sit for a day so it's really hard so that when we start bending the rebar above it, we're not gonna do damage and break it loose. If we start doing that today, that would be the case. So this is perfect time to take a break for a day and be back and give you another view of what we're gonna do next. Okay. Thank you for coming. Porque sí, todavía tenemos que cambiar. So 10 feet right here. That's pretty good. Okay. It's pretty darn big, huh? Good. Really? Yeah. Why not? Perfect. Yeah. So here we are now cutting these longer verticals and running them all the way over the top and down the other side of random lengths. And approximately we're going for about a nine to ten foot high tank which is a little taller than it is uh, at the base at the diameter so that's um now accomplished by cutting these rebars random lengths and kind of putting them in and then we'll shape our stone as we go and put on our access we've got this uh, really cool ring for the top will be the access door that comes down in the top of the boulder and it'll get wired in like this up above us there you, go. you see um uh Yeah. Okay. And let's just see how it holds. <laughs> let's see. Looks yeah. pretty good. I mean. Yeah. So what we're doing now is bending a rebar ring, which will be on the outside of our our uh, access door, and it'll be a, a place to terminate our verticals, which we're going to have up from the side. So we've hung a, a three temporary uh, pieces of rebar just kind of up in the air and and to hold on our access roof and now we're making this ring and Martin who's uh, been doing this for many years is um, using this simple tool and it's made for different size rebar it has a half inch side and a three quarter or three eighths inch side for bending rebar but it's something you can have out in the middle of nowhere you don't have uh, you don't need fancy tools okay now we're going to start with our horizontal rings which were the same 3 8 rebar, although I've decided to put a half inch one on the second one up. And we're going to go down to six inches above the slab and tie this horizontal rebar all the way around. And we have already, you can see our 
framework and this is just a temporary horizontal put in up here higher to hold everything together. What we're doing now is tying the horizontal rebars and this is a 3 8 rebar system mainly but I put a half an inch here and a little bit lower and we're, we're a little closer we're starting six inches eight inches apart we're about 14 inches apart up here and the idea being there's more pressure down below i looked at some tables and kind of decided to overkill it a little bit and uh especially with all the different wires we're using so wherever we don't have um rebar overlapping our 40 to 50 diameters we'll go back in and put a, a longer section in because we want to really create a strong bird cage of rebar here before we put the wire on so you'll see we're, we're leaving the wire in such ways that when we go put the, the uh, different layers of wire on, we'll also be able to pull these wire and use them in our strut. So I think that's uh, good for today. You see we're in our slab. We're, we're putting our horizontals on the outside because they're like the staves on a hot tub or the rings on a hot tub. They're holding everything in. And you can see if you were to put them on the inside of the verticals, it wouldn't do the same thing in the way that it's put together as a structure because then these verticals could kind of be independent on the outside and move in an earthquake. This way everything's held to the inside. So here you'll see some of the details that I put on this water tank to be able to get up on the back. Like um, these little steps that are made out of, um, well, alambrón is a um, like a quarter inch rebar and then we're reinforcing it with uh, lathing wire and we'll cement it in and and make it like something we can walk up in the end but we're making this one like a big old boulder and you can see we've got uh, we're, we're near the end there with our finishing details to be able to start cementing it in which we're going to do from the inside in one layer and then come from the outside with more of a, a uh, concrete mix okay here we are filling the bottom now starting with the cement uh, coming up on the inside. So we've got a mixing situation going on out here. The guys are bringing it up and lowering it down through the top. So here I'm standing on top of an 8 foot ladder in our 10 foot tall tank. And you can see this system of rebar, chicken wire on the outside, lathing wire, and 66-1010 wire. And we're now putting the first coat on the inside all the way up. It's just almost it's a foggy day and uh, we're mixing, you know the energy of a 14 year old, mixing uh, cement and uh, this is actually going to be the mixture for inside which is a fine uh, mortar mix, four to one mix of cement to sand using a high quality sand and then you can see we pushed it through from the inside so it's locking into all the different levels of wire we have the chicken wire on the outside and then you can see the uh, 661010 wire the six inch square wire and then on the inside the lathing wire while the rebar which is on what about average of 12 inches on center 15 inches on center running in both directions and so now we're applying the base, which we're using actually a concrete mix, more stone. And we're, we're uh, throwing in a four or five inch uh, kind of a kick base, you know, which will buttress the uh, tank better. And then we'll go to the finer mix, the mortar mix, uh, pushing through from the outside, uh, making sure to moisten the wall really well. And we also have added a, a kind of a concrete bonder. It's a, a more of a waterproofer, you know. Uh, down here in Mexico, they call it Dada Well. And uh, anyway, that's our next step. And we're up about five feet, you know, going on to the outside now. You can see first coat. So you can see now we're putting on this um, mortar mix in layers and over all the wires. This is from the inside. And every amount that we put on, not in straight lines. We then connect up while it's still wet and go on to another layer and then put a, a, a layer on before everything sets up at the end of the day. So there's at least two layers that are fresh in one day. And then we'll wait, cure, and 
coat with a um, concrete adhesive and then put on another layer. So here I'm uh, pre-wetting the wall, making sure that there's always good adhesion with the cement. So it's, it's another layer as we're going up and you see we have our, our lathing wire on the inside and then the rebar and then 661010 wire which is, is out here. And then beyond that is chicken wire. So four layers and uh, we're making a key with the first coat and then while the first coat is still wet on the inside, we go from the outside the next day while it's curing and continue on the outside doing the same thing. Something you can do without major mixers and uh, so I'm using these kind of primitive tools, a trowel to pick up the cement, and the mixture is a four to one, four, four parts of quality sand to one part of cement, Portland cement, whatever cement, and, uh, and then mix to this kind of a semi-stiff batch, and then put it, put it on as thick as possible. So you're, you're smoothing it on, putting the key into the other wire on the back, and then getting more and going on. And there's different ways to apply it. You know, you find out the way that you're best at it. And uh, another way that, that I find is, is real handy for most people is kind of grabbing chunks of it and uh, putting on as much as you can and trying to keep it from slipping down. It's, it's uh, not quite as fast, but if you get good at it, you can put on quite a bit and it doesn't fall and you're keying it into the behind. And then later you see you put another coat on where you are. And in every coat we're putting, uh, here in Mexico they call it Dada Web, it's a form of uh, concrete adhesive. And it makes the, uh, the cement stickier and more waterproof and it has better adhesion. One, one coat to the other. You try not to have rocks in this coat, but a little bit of it then That's how we go. So uh, here we are putting the final coat of waterproofing. It's, it's something I used to uh, use a lot in construction, similar a cementitious mix that's slightly rubberized. It's got some kind of, uh, it, it gets kind of sticky and it's more waterproof and you just keep finishing it until it gets kind of smooth put on two coats and uh, it comes under different names thorough seal in the states sometimes united states and uh, here in mexico it's um, it's a semenkin waterproof uh, plastic kind of um, finish so we're using it for waterproofing. It's not that expensive. It's pretty expensive. It, it's um, here in Mexico, $35 a bag for 15 kilos, 15 kilo sack. And I think we're going to use 10 of those to do the full waterproofing of this tank. It's close to 5,000 gallons. Okay, folks that have watched us through this project, we're getting to the end. And uh, thanks for coming. It's a beautiful day today. And early November in Baja, California, and where we are just south of Ensenada. And this is the time of year that the clouds form and we open up our views because the uh, fog is no longer happening for the summer month that, that happens in the summer month. I love it this time of year. I love it this time of year. Um, here down below is uh, Rancho Bosque Encantado and this whole area is going to be served by this water tank that we've been uh, showing you and, and uh, it's barrel cement over over the months and it's we would have finished it but we had so many other projects to do that we kind of uh, put it off over a series of months but we're on the final stages now which is really the the part where we make it more uh, decorative because it's really going to appear like a big rock and we added in a couple of buttresses here on the sides which when we finish off, you see the big boulders, we'll have boulders up against and this whole thing will look more like a big old boulder. You know, we're going to finish it off a little bit like that with this exterior plaster. So this is actually a stucco coat that we're putting on. You could do it with regular cement too and a little bit of color in it. And we're using these boxed uh, colors that you can get in I'm sure different countries. And, and uh, I got two different types and it's like a cement um, coloring agent cementitious uh, base 
of some sort too or, or powder that mixes with cement well because um, stucco is a type of uh, cement mixture as well so what we're doing this is kind of the last coat on the outside although we'll probably do some kind of a, a sealer coat as well uh, and then we'll seal the inside and we've made it like a a big old boulder I don't know if you can see around the corner here without tripping my friend but we have well on the back side some uh, places where we can walk up on it and uh, get to the top and then the uh, the top we have up there is is you know a metal top that opens up and we actually made a place where you can sit up there to watch the view okay so here we have our our boulder ferrule cement tank all finished and just a little comment about the mechanical um, we have a big drain that's set right at the bottom so when we clean out the tank we can get all the drain you know clean it all the way out this is the water to our ranch and this is the fill tank this fills from the pump that we have way down below and that's really there's not much more mechanical to this thing than the simple filling and emptying and cleaning out so I hope that helps and we did some color here and there to try and make it look more like a big boulder from a disc though so you'd be the judge of that and we do have a place to sit on top and it is strong and for those of you who are wondering it's probably about three inches thick maybe four at the most as it's got as you noticed three or four different layers of plaster and cement and concrete against all the wire and rebar and everything that we showed you earlier so I hope that's enough to give you an idea about how to build one of these yourself. Thank you for participating and listening to this video.